Hey, this is Georgie. And Pete. And welcome to Studio Jargon Busters, where I've hijacked his channel to talk about some studio terminology that is maybe a little bit misunderstood, and we put it into plain English. That's right. In every episode, we're going to take a commonly used audio or studio term, and I'm going to try and break it down in some plain English and make it more commonly understood. And I'm going to keep him honest. That's right. And I've got Georgie here with me because she is someone who has a musical background, but it's probably fair to say that you haven't had a whole lot of experience in recording. So what... Yeah. I what I wanted is someone who can actually keep me honest and can ask questions as we go along all about what we're talking about. So what is your background when it comes to music? Um, I enjoy music. I enjoy listening to music. I did a lot of musical theatre as a teenager. Um, and now my job is in uh, digital communications. So I do a lot of web and uh, digital stuff, but uh, I don't have a lot of experience with digital recording. So that's where I'm going to be the the layperson to your expert. And that is exactly what we're trying to do here because I want to make sure that we can try and explain these terms using as little jargon as possible because there's no point busting jargon by using other jargon. <laughs> so let's jump in and talk about our first topic. What are we talking about in today's episode? Uh, today we're talking about DAWs. And do you know what DAW stands for? Uh, no. <laughs> so let's talk about DAW's digital audio workstations here in Studio Jargon Busters. Let's go. So the reason that I wanted to use DAW as the very first topic of Studio Jargon Busters is that DAW or Digital Audio Workstation is what most people will be using right now to actually record their audio. So Digital Audio Workstation is basically the software that you use to record music. So if you think of a Mac or a PC or an iPhone or an iPad, and I use GarageBand as you probably have seen. But obviously there are others. There are plenty of others. So there is Pro Tools is probably the industry standard. So Pro Tools uh, was developed 10 plus years ago and is on Mac platforms primarily. There's PC digital audio workstations like Reaper, which I use here as you know. Maybe? Sure. Sure, why not? Um, why not? <laughs> so we use Reaper to record here. There's things like Studio One, there's Nuendo, there's a whole raft of different pieces of software. But what I wanted to talk about today is a little bit about the history, and then we'll get back to what a digital audio workstation actually is. So if you think about recording, uh, we're in the digital world now, yeah, um, as you alluded to before. Previously, we were in the analog world. So when we recorded audio, we used a mixing desk or a console, which is what you see whenever you see someone, sliders. yeah, someone with all the sliders and all the knobs and all the dials. They look very technical. Um, all that is, is a bunch of tracks. So every one of those is just the volume slider and the bunch of knobs that are for all the different things that you do. Yep, yeah, yeah. It looks like you're a DJ. Wiki, wiki, wiki. Wiki, wiki. <laughs> And what they would do is they would record to a tape machine. So big reel to reel tape, big quarter inch tapes or like even bigger tapes back in the day. So you would actually plug in your instruments, you'd go through the console, through the mixing desk into the tape machine and you could record multiple tracks. So we're talking multi-track recording and digital audio workstations are all about multi-track recording. So if you think of your old school tape recorder, you could record two tracks basically, left and right, stereo recording. Whereas multi-track could record four or eight or 16 or 32 or 64 tracks of audio. So back in the day when you were recording your bands. Band, <laughs> you can use it, band. <laughs> Bands, uh, <laughs> EPs. There was the there was the bass, guitar, vocals, and drums. So would that be safe to say that it was four track? It was recording? exactly a four track recording. So <laughs> once we moved on from the professional studios, the home studio recorder back in the day had to use a four track cassette recorder. So we were using like actual cassettes, and you'd put the cassette in. You'd have your four channels, your four tracks and you could record four channels of audio into your four track tape machine. Those were the days, <laughs> Those were, they? were the days. <laughs> From there, we moved on to a digital equivalent. So you then had your eight track or your 16 track <gasps> digital recorder. Eight track. Eight track, well, 
Yeah, not, Wait, that's not, not that's to be confused different. with the eight track <laughs> tapes that you record. Yeah, okay. Different. Different. Sorry. Different. But an eight track digital recorder, which basically used a hard drive and you could record directly into that as opposed to using a cassette tape. Then we moved on to actual software. So where we are at now is that we have the ability to, through our Mac or our PC or our mobile device, I don't have my phone handy, but our iPhone. They know what a phone looks like. You know what a phone looks like? Pretend this is a phone. A phone or a tablet (laughs) or a PC or a Mac and you're running software on that. So you have an audio interface that you can actually interface with your PC or your Mac or your device, and then you can actually record. And the whole purpose of multi-track recording is that you don't have to record everything at once. You can if you have enough inputs. But but why would you? Why would you? Well, if you're a home recording person, such as myself, then you'll record your bass first, then you can record your drums, you can record your guitar, you can record your vocals. Oh, so if you're like an actual recording band, you could do them all at the same time. And it would make sense. Exactly. If you had enough inputs. So if you have an interface that had eight inputs and you wanted to plug all of your different devices in, then you can record all at the same time. You can multi-track record in your DAW Uh, all at the same time. Whereas what a lot of people do, which is what we do and what you've done when I've managed to wrangle you in here and say, record some backing vocals on this song, please. Then it's all... All the other tracks are recorded in my DAW and then you're just recording, you're overdubbing, which we will talk about in another episode. Uh-huh. But overdubbing, the short version just means that you have the recorded tracks already and you add, you overdub, you have an extra track that you record and you can overdub many, 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 like like that. Yeah, let's do this. Many, many, many uh, tracks on top of your original track. So Digital Audio Workstation, to get back to the topic, is a piece of software these days that's usually running on your Mac, your PC, your mobile device that is actually doing the grunt work and recording your audio. You can then mix and master. We'll talk about those again another day. You can add plugins. We'll talk about those another day. And you can actually record your audio and then produce a song that you can then distribute to the world. So DAWs, very important pieces of equipment these days. Wonderful pieces of software. Do you have any questions about so DAW? Many questions. <laughs> <laughs> so many questions. So many that I cannot think of them at the moment. Exactly. Well, the good news is that we have episodes coming out continuously. We will be busting a whole bunch more jargon. If you have things that you would like busted in this series, then let us know. And if you've got other comments, questions, or suggestions, obviously, you can leave them down below. And we will see you on the next episode where we'll be busting another piece of jargon. Another piece of jargon. We'll be talking about EQ or I'm going to say equalizers. Exactly. The equalizer, that TV show from the 80s. Okay, we will see you next time. Bye.